Hey, it's Jamie. I have a quick money and time saving tip for you. Have you ever heard of a postage meter? Well, I never really cared that much about postage until my personal assistant ended up having a baby. And I've been the one lately to go to the post office, wait in line forever, drive back and forth. It's been a pain in the butt. I had no idea how much time was being wasted doing this. In fact, 15 minutes a day, if you were to add it up, ends up to be over seven days in a full calendar year. Imagine what you could do with that much time. Plus, I've actually partnered with a company called Neo Post. They have a postage meter and you can save 6% on first class mail also. So if you're excited, go to neopost280.com slash million with the promo code million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, which I hope you can spell by now. And if you enter your zip code right there, you'll see if you're in the right place in order to have six months free of your postage meter by Neopost. So go to neopost280.com slash million to go check it out. And I hope it saves you time and money and frustration from waiting in line at the post office forever. Have an amazing day. Potent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters and I have my amazing, wonderful friend where we talked way too long before this interview actually started, Matthew Pollard. And he's actually coming out with a brand new book, which you must pick up. Did I do a good job? Must yeah, pick yeah. up. It's called The Introvert's Edge and it's all about getting them to sell better than anybody, which is really, really impressive. Go to introvertsedge.com to check it out. Whole bunch of bonuses, but stay tuned for all of that. Thanks so much for inviting me to the studio. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. You haven't seen the new set. So if people check out the interview we had last time, it was very different. See, he like brings his own set. It's very impressive and it shows me up a lot, but I'm okay with that because you're amazing. So give us the premise in general of the book. So the idea is that introverts know that they can't sell and they believe they have to have this gift of the gab to be a salesperson and they just know they don't have that. So we kind of, and this is not actually true, just this is what introverts tell themselves continuously and it's what I was told when I tried to move into sales. And what I learned is that sales was just a process. It's a process like any other, but because we've heard that we can't learn it, we don't try. And so the goal of this book is really to make sure that introverts understand it is just a process. It's a step-by-step -step process. And if you follow that, you don't have to be inauthentic. You don't have to do all those bulldog techniques or the hard closings. And the book's written like a novel. So the whole idea is that you laugh out loud, you enjoy the stories in the book, and you just happen to learn sales as you do it. That's really impressive because I hated, 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 hated sales because I thought I was bad and I turned bright red and was special eight, right? So I look awkward and crazy and weird and I'd self-talk and then not close a sale and be like, wow, I suck really, really bad. So that would have helped me way back when. Well, most people don't know you're introverted, right? I didn't know you're introverted. So you're, I mean, you're coming on my show, The Introvert's Edge, and I remember telling you about all these surprising introverts that I was finding and you're like, you know, I'm an introvert too, right? And you blew me away. And I think that a lot of introverts, it's kind of one of those things that we do, right? We see all these successful people and we're like, oh, it's easy for them. They're just natural extroverts. They can do it. But that's our the stigma of introversion, right? We, we see it. We, we suffer from it ourselves. And you know, funny story, we actually, Brian um, Smith, the founder of Ugg Boots, he actually um, picked up this book because I, I sent it to him to, to write an endorsement. And he said to me, you know, Matt, I have to admit, I have not read a sales book more than two chapters in without throwing it away and just feeling icky. So look, I don't like your chances about me endorsing it, but I, I will give it a go because we're mates. I mean, another Australian, right? We do a lot for each other. I was going to say, oh, uh, <laughs> name dropping. Okay, go ahead. Well, he, he, he read it in three sittings because he just enjoyed the stories and he actually is quite successful at sales in himself, but he realized all the things that he was doing naturally that he kind of picked up along the way. And I mean, for him, he hated sales at the start and now he's good at it. But for him, it always has to come from a point of authenticity because if it doesn't, he just feels disgusted by himself. And so when he looked at how he learned, he's like, that's what I'm doing now. But just like me, like when I started off in sales, you know, I was in a commission only job because I lost my last job just before Christmas. And, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. I had 93 doors before my first sale. And, 
you know, I was I had bad acne, I had braces, I wasn't exactly the the person you would ex- see as that extroverted person that would just run in a door and have that charismatic personality. Mm. But I learned through understanding it as a process, focusing on each step and just gradually getting better at it. And I think that's really important for an introvert. Like we tend to take every sale so personally. Mm-hmm. And when a sale doesn't go well, they're like, why don't they like me? And that's not really the answer. The answer is to look at the system and say, okay, they didn't say no to me personally. They said no to the system. And as a scientist wouldn't say, well, I'm not meant to be a scientist because the experiment didn't work. We don't say we weren't meant to be a salesperson. We just need to look at the steps in the process and what we can perfect to make it better and deliver a much more predictable result. I love this because everybody that's listening right now, especially introverted ones, but usually kind of suck at sales. And it's like, oh, you have to bang your head against the wall a thousand times, and then you kind of learn it. Awesome. So please enlighten us on the system that you actually go through, so that way those people don't have to do the same thing that I did. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, so what's interesting about this is every step that I talk about in the book, I mean, this isn't new stuff, right? The, the whole idea of... Wait, so is that beautiful. product placement? Yes, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> I have ADD. You can't do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so everything you learn in the book it's not about anything new and different. It's just written for introverts. And what I found is anytime I'd read a book, the premises were good, but they'd always focus on doing those bulldog techniques. And all of a sudden, I'd be like, well, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't even say those words. Like, I'd be like, I can't literally say that. that no, I can't. Yeah. And that's, that's a big problem for me as well. Like, when I was learning it, like, the first one about just developing rapport. And they'd tell me how to you know, how to strike up a conversation. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I can't do that. So I had to learn very structured processes for having dialogues and having conversations. So very similar to when, when I come into a room and I'm, I'm having a, a sales activity, like I'm going, maybe I'm trying to sell you something. Naturally, when I walk into your business or, you know, your, your home, you might say something like, would you like a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? And what I will generally do is I'll say, you know, it's it's part of the late in the afternoon. If I have another coffee, I will be bouncing off the walls. And now I drink mate tea. So I actually say, well, actually, I don't drink coffee anymore. And the reason for that is and I explain it and I'd say, but I would love a glass of water if that's OK. And it allows me to give value. And a lot of times we end up in that dialogue around the fact that they actually struggle with, you know, problems with coffee themselves or they could never give up coffee. And we have a bit of a laugh and joke. Now, this is completely manufactured. However, for me, every single time it allows me to break that really uncomfortable barrier that I'm just really not okay with otherwise. So, you know, originally I used to, you know, show up and I would say something like, you know, can you believe the traffic? Like, how long does it take you to get here? Like, I just spent 45 minutes getting here and it should have only taken me 15 minutes because that embeds the fact that they should really give me some time to listen to me because I've just driven all this way. But it also gets them to talk about the fact that the population's increasing and how they don't like Austin traffic or Melbourne traffic. And it just gets us to have that little conversation that just takes the the edge off. Mm, it's like think, the connection point in between. So you're not like, okay, now we're ready, go. Because that's awkward and crazy. And that that's exactly it. Like I see so many people that are introverted and they're like, you know, my father used to say this all the time. He's like, I wish people just stop the small talk. Can we just get to the facts? Like, I just want to get into that conversation. And I think especially introverted business owners or salespeople, they're like, you can tell that they are angry about the fact that you're having this casual conversation. And what we need to understand as introverts is it is an important part of the dialogue and you will get to the opportunity to have the sale. But it's important if they're extroverts or if they're introverts, people like to buy from people they feel like they have a relationship with. So it's so vitally important that we talk to them and socialize. Now, that doesn't mean that we spend 45 minutes socializing. I've seen extroverts, and you know this is where they actually have a disadvantage. I've seen extroverts go into a conversation with a doctor where they've got a 45 minute appointment and they spend 30 minutes socializing and they're like, the doctor's like, oh, I'm gonna have to go soon and they've run out of time. So I actually think introverts with a process actually have an advantage. And once they get the sales system right, they'll beat their extroverted counterparts hands down. So, but it's important to follow the steps. So the first one is really about doing that. The second one is really just to embed some credibility, right? Talk about people that you've worked with in the past, like them. Talk about the fact that you focus on people that are in their industry. Tell some stories about people that you've worked with or say, now my general process is that I I do these specific things because what I find is that most people, you know, they just come and have like a custom process because I work with people like you and here's some examples, I can deliver a better result. So just really just set some time 
I'm talking about some credibility elements. You know, when I come to a meeting, frequently I will talk about someone that I've worked with that they would love to aspire to be one day. Just something that allows us to create that dialogue of, you know, I'm not sitting here hoping to get your business. You'd be lucky to work with me. Okay, so what if you don't have those stories? Because I remember at the beginning, I was like, so, and they're like, what about this? I'm like, I, right? And then that makes me awkward and weirder. And then of course I can't sell. So what's interesting is you're always one conversation away from having a really interesting story. So one of the things that I love doing is manufacturing momentum. So if I have a conversation with you and we talk about the prospect of working together, what I'll then do in that conversation with the next person is talk about the conversation I just had Absolutely. and how excited you were about the prospect even of working together. Even if I didn't together. even say yes. You don't need to say yes because <laughs> as long as you have something where I can, I can grab that piece of information and talk about it, then it, it's completely fine. Now, again, the focus here is really just about bringing some of that credibility elements in. Now, if you've written an article for Entrepreneur or been on somebody's podcast, which if anyone knows how hard it is to get on podcasts, like getting on your show is actually quite difficult. You're quite selective. But for a lot of people, they're just looking for really good guests that can give great value. Yeah. So you can say something like, you know, I explained this on a podcast interview recently. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, now you're an authority because everybody else they've had in, you know, hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is you want to move into an agenda. Now, this sounds ridiculous, but have you ever, like, you have, you say you have ADD and you joke about that all the oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> so when you have ADD, you, you've probably been in classrooms and you're like, where is that? Where are they going with this? Well, sales is exactly the same. Like when you're in a sale and you're listening to someone go through their pitch, you're like, where are they going with this? Like, is this ever going to end? What's in it for me? Come exactly. On, yep. Exactly right. So for me, there are two reasons why I like to set an agenda. One is I like to make sure they understand that there's going to be a process and that we're going to get to the part where I'm going to talk about price. So don't ask me right now. And if they ask me right now, I'm going to say, as I just explained, we're going to get there. But at the moment, I need to ask you questions before I know exactly what I can do for you. So it really just, I mean, introverts really hate being confronted with what's the price. And it happens so quickly. Mm. But they're kind of setting themselves up for that because they don't set an agenda and you want to take control. People respect the person that says, hey, I have an agenda. We're going to follow it. I have a process. Because the last thing you want to do, I mean, even coming into a production studio like this, you want to know the person running the camera has a process. And if sales is the first opportunity they get of, to see whether or not you have a process or not, you don't want to just wing it. Like Brian Tracy talks about the fact that the top 10% of all salespeople have a planned pr presentation. And that's extroverts and introverts, because you want to show that you have systems in everything that you do. So talking about the fact that you have a process will allow them to feel comfortable and go, okay, this person's got control. I'm not going to be in this two hour meeting that just where I'm going to have to say, look, let me think about it, or I want to move forward. I can relax. But secondly, I've been in those sales events where people will just start hammering me with questions. And I'm like, is this an interrogation? Like you're asking me questions I wouldn't want my competition to know. And I don't want to tell you about it. Yeah. So just saying something as simple as, look, what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to ask you a few questions so I get a better understanding of your business and your unique needs so that I can tailor a solution specifically to what you're looking for. Is that okay? And as soon as you ask for if, if it's okay, the pressure just disappears. Number one, you said at the beginning, you name dropped also. You already added credibility besides my introduction. You've been doing a lot of this, even in this interview, hmm? which is really Have impressive. <laughs> Flow golf clap. You guys. But, but what's impressive is that because it seems so natural because you've done it so often, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal anymore. And so when we do it over and over and over again, you can come up with these things. Because I know the people that are listening are like, well, what do I say? Like, he's been doing it. He wrote a book about it. He's mm -hmm. way better, right? Yeah. And so writing it down, one that like worked really well or tweaking it. Do you have scripts in the book or some like little things that we can start right away with? Yeah, definitely. So the way the book's designed is we actually use scripts of other people so that you can actually see the exact things that they say. But the point of this book is not that you grab their scripts and make them yours. It's really, you've got to find a process that's authentic for you. So the book really helps you create your own authentic process, right? Because the goal of being an introvert is that you need to be you. And a good example of that, so this studio is obviously, it's a great studio, it's not mine. It's a, the, the owner of this is a, a company called Golden Arm Media. It's Alex Murphy is a client of mine, right? Good placement, that was good. Good, yeah, okay. Good, did it well. That was, was so, smooth too, but, go ahead. But the thing <laughs> is that Alex had a chronic stutter when he started this business. And if people look back to the original uh, interview that you and I did, you know, we were in a, a pretty much a white background and you and I were almost touching knees at the same time. And the studio was smaller than the room we're in right now. And when I started working with him, I started talking to him about this and he's like, Matt, I don't, 
I don't want to sound like a robot. Like what you're talking about sounds like sales scripting. And you know, I've seen those telemarketers that call up and they're like, hello, my name is, I don't want to be one of those people. Yeah, I used to be one of those people. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can't say anything else but the script because I don't know. I used to have them like printed out in front of me. It was horrible. And, and that's the thing. People think when they have to gravitate to a sales system, if they don't have that natural personality, that's their only option. Mm. And the sales process is actually about understanding the steps in the process. And if all you do is know the steps and follow the steps in order, you'll double your sales. Right now, I've, you know, I've got a client. Guaranteed. No, sorry. <laughs> Guaranteed. Well, I've got a client, Derek Lewis, in the book who actually was the guy that uh, co-authored my, my book with me. And he's one of my clients. And he says in the book that he didn't follow all of the elements of the book, yet he went from struggling to make $27,000 to having a strong six-figure income within less than four months of, of just working with me through these steps because it gave him the steps. And for him, and just like Alex, I mean, Alex, again, had a stutter and he learned these steps because he, but he did have a big barrier with it. He thought, look, I'm going to sound robotic. I'm really uncomfortable. So he was hesitant. But what he found is when he went into the sale armed with these processes, he could actually be more authentic because rather than worrying about what he was going to say next, he could actually be in the room. And he actually found that his stutter subsided a lot because when he's being natural and comfortable, he doesn't stutter as much when he's uncomfortable, of course, he's going to stutter more. So it really just fixed the problem in a lot of ways. And, you know, one of the jokes that I used to always say to my sales team, because, you know, when people started to work with me at, at, at my old educational facility, my sales team had to learn a 12 page sales script. Like I was crazy about making sure that people knew really? every single 12 word. Pages. Now they had to learn every single word. And I said, to, they're like, Matt, this is a lot of work. Like I could go and work at another job and not have to deal with this. And I said, yeah, cool. But let me ask you a question. You know, those people that do Shakespeare off, off, off Broadway, they're probably making no more than the guy that or girl that's working at Chuck E. Cheese. Doing this process, you can make a strong six figure income guaranteed by following this process. All you've got to do is learn the words. Now, that was my process. Now, if they learned the words, then they could make it their own. But they had to learn the words first because then they've got that systematic process. So for people that are watching that have sales team, what I did is I always created the script, then I got them to learn it, then make it their own. And by doing it that way, because the sales team will be like, can I make it my own first? That's them saying, I don't want to do the work. So, and you can't quarantine whether what they're doing is working or not if they didn't start from a baseline. Remember, like if you create a new factory, if you do the factory different every time, you're not gonna be able to tell what's different. Mm -hmm. So I got people to learn the script and then make it their own. And their objection was, I'm gonna sound robotic. And I said, tell me about your favorite movie. And they'd tell me their favorite movie. And I said, so all the actors in there, were they pretty natural? And they were like, well, yeah. And I said, well, they're reading from a script though, right? And they'd be like, well, yeah, but they're actors. And I said, okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to understand that an actor learns a script, then they practice it, they embody it, they embrace it, it becomes themselves. Like you look at someone like Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, I have seen that actor and I've, he is that person. And that's the thing that people miss with sales. They think that they have to be robotic and they don't see it as the same thing. So what I always suggest to people is they need to look at what they currently say. They need to write it down. Then when they're going through the book, they might just need, what they, they'll find is some of the things they say are just out of order. Mm -hmm. And because they're out of order, it makes a profound difference. For Judy Robinette, who wrote the foreword for this book, like it was one thing. When somebody asked her about price, she didn't know what to say. And she found that she always went low and then they'd be like, oh, well, we want to think about it. Well, she was the number one business book author of 2014. And when they called her to ask how much she was to speak, her fee was too low and it freaked her out. They're like, oh, maybe she's not a good speaker. So instead, I just taught her what specifically to say when they asked that question to get them to tell her their number. So Judy used to say in the past, she'd be like, uh, 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 in this number. Now, all she says is she says, well, when you picked up the phone to call me, knowing you know my, my credibility and knowing the kind of person that I am, you probably had a bit of an idea of, about what working with me would cost. What sort of idea of price did you have in mind? And the yeah, customer would throw it out first, smart. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, what what happened was the customer would say, "Well, look, I know you probably charge more than this, but we really have a budget of about twenty thousand dollars, and we really couldn't pay more than that." And she's going like this. It's four no. times <laughs> what she was charging. 
four times. Four times what she was charging <laughs> at the time. Now she's like, I love you, Matthew Pollard. Thank you so much. Well, now she charges a lot more. She, but she also had questions, and that's why it's important to understand the process. She's like, well, what if they don't do that? I said, well, what other options do you think they would say? Well, you're going to have two other groups of people. One group that says, I don't know. Now, that's a very different statement. Saying I don't know means I'm not the decision maker. So you then need to understand what the sales, what the process of them buying is. So you now ask more detailed questions and you coach them around finding out what the budget is. Because you can say something like, well, I have different services that I do depending on your budget. So it's important before we get to the point of making a proposal that we're making the right proposal. So tell me a little bit about the steps about how you would go through the approval process. And generally that leads to actually speaking to the decision maker instead of the secretary that's probably made the phone call. And then you've got the third group of people that's like, no, I really just need to know the price. And that's the group that you tell. But that's such a small group of the, the overall population. It, you know, I think every time I've tried it, I may have had that come up maybe twice. Because if you've done the first steps right, then you're fine. And I think that that's one of the things that people miss with a sales process, right? Anytime we read a book and you'll find, you know, I've read a huge number of sales books and it's always like, here's a strategy, here's a strategy. And you go and apply one of them and you're like, oh, that didn't work. Well, in isolation, no sales strategy will work guaranteed. And even when you follow a sales process, I mean, if you're a salesperson that never gets a no, you're the best salesperson on the planet. But if you focus on every single step, as you get to the point where they talk about price and you then say it that way, they've already developed such a strong relationship with you, then you know, they're just gonna, they're going to tell you because they have that rapport with you. You clearly have a process and now they're like, wow, I really hope I can afford this person. So they're now hoping that if they mention the number, you'll do something nice for them and come to the party. And that's what, what Judy found every time. And you know, I get the same thing. I get people will say to me, you know, I wasn't expecting any change from X number. And a lot of times it's a lot more money than I actually do charge because people think of a value of, of this high. And you know, for me, I know that I'm worth the money that they're saying, but again, I also am very, very focused on making sure that when I deliver something, you know, they don't have to you know, leverage all their credit cards to work with me. Now, I think that a lot of people, a lot of introverts are always sitting there going, I wish people would pay me what I'm worth. And by mentioning a price, what actually happens is they devalue themselves. So what happens though if they say something way lower and you're like, oh, right? If you get to the price element and they, they mention a lot lower price, well, that would mean that you haven't done your job well enough. So what I would suggest is you say, you know, I've had a client just like you that actually said that once. And what happened is I ended up helping them find a service provider that would deliver it for that price because getting something for that price, here's what you're noticing. And to use a public speaking example, you say, when you go to an event, you can always tell a speaker that's spoken at maybe 10 events and are using this as an opportunity. And then you've got this other person that you just, you know, they've spoken on so many stages. And that's the person you need at your conference. A lot of times that person that's using it for experience can choke. You want a couple of people of super high caliber because then if something goes wrong, that person can say, oh yeah, I'll just do a workshop in the middle of that. And so if you've already got a couple of premium speakers like that, then you definitely don't need me and that budget's completely fine and I'll recommend a few people to you. But if you haven't got someone of that caliber, my suggestion would be at every conference you need someone like that, right? So now I'm trying to consult with you and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make in sales is they're trying to sell. Jamie, I've seen the way you work with people. You, you're a consultant. You sit down and you're like, how do I fix your problem without using me? Yes. And then if they have to use you, it's like, okay. And if they're like, well, I don't have a budget to work with you. You're like, okay, so here are some other people, but here are the pitfalls with these people. So go into that knowing that. But it's all about being a consultant because if you're, you're you, know, you think about going to your accountant or your lawyer, when they give you advice, you take it. When you go and hear a salesperson, you're like, well, hang on a second, back off. Like, I'll make my own decision. That's exactly how, whenever I do any sales calls, I go, I'm going to put myself in your position and I'm going to tell you what I would do if I were you. And if that means going to hire somebody else and not me, totally cool. Or if it's nothing to do with any of this stuff and you should totally do something else different, that matters too. Because what I care about is you as a human and what's best for you. Because I've been in the game a long time and everyone's like, thank goodness. And how, right? Like, oh my gosh, phew. And how authentic is that? Yeah. That's the difference. I mean, Introverts don't want to be salespeople. And you'll notice a lot of the stories in this book, one of the biggest objections they had with working with me was they didn't want me to make them become a salesperson. And that's not the answer. I mean, for introverts, again, uh, there's, there's a story in this book about, uh, I had an introvert real estate 
agent that asked me to come and help him. And he, one of his um, two ICs was a like a bulldog salesperson. You're talking this guy that fist pressed on the desk, standing up, yelling at the phone, hyped up on coffee. I can't imagine a worse way to live. Coffee's for closers. <laughs> No, it's not. It's it's for people that want to stay awake when you've done back-to-back 12-hour shoots like I have. I will give you that. But to have to get hyped up on coffee just to do something because it's so horrible to do every day, that's not a way to live. Now, he said that he enjoyed it, but now he understands the process of a sale and he just waltzes in and tells stories. And it makes such a difference because for us, we, for especially for introverts, we don't want to be inauthentic. We don't want to feel like we're hounding someone and pressuring someone. So the next part of the process is storytelling. And for me, what I find is I can tell you all of the reasons for why my product and service is great for you. I can listen to a lot of the sales books and sell the sizzle, not the steak, and you know talk about the, the benefits of the product rather than the features. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm still telling you and your logical mind making that decision whether do I really believe this guy? Do I believe it'll fit my unique situation? Mm-hmm. And that's a really hard thing to get people to buy into. And again, it feels really salesy. But instead, if I say, you know, Jamie, I understand where you're at. And as a matter of fact, I had a client just like you who had a similar problem. And now I tell you a story of how we identified the elements in their business that needed improvement and how we created the implementation and then the outcome. And then I bring it back to a moral of, you know, they were a little bit worried at the start, but now they're so glad they worked with me and here's the return on investment or here is the change in their mindset or the relief that they had. And I bring it back to both a logical and an emotional reason for why they're so happy they worked with me. Now, you can't disagree with that person's experience. And here's the other cool thing. When I tell you the logical reasons, your logical mind is literally going to swap them away. You're going to think of objections, reasons why that doesn't apply to you. (laughs) I've heard that before, blah, blah, blah. blah, Exactly. It happens all the time. But when I tell you a story, basically a short circuit your logical mind. And your brain goes, oh, story time. And you're listening. And you'll listen to the entire story. And I've done this cold calling just to test it. And I've tried using logical-based objection handling. And I get maybe eight to nine seconds to, to get, they're either interested or they're not. And I got Alex to, to do the exact same thing, this real estate agent, the bulldog. And he's like, they're going to give me eight seconds. They're going to hang up on me. They're not going to listen to a one minute story. Yeah, they did. They listened to the entire story. And more than that, instead of cold calling and getting like the small companies, they were getting C-level executives. And, and look, the number of appointments quadrupled in the space of two months. And they put an extra million dollars on their bottom line within that period. And it was just by telling stories. Now, I've tested this. I've told like these ridiculously large stories that just seem to go on forever. And people still listen on cold calls. So if you can do this in appointments, then it gives you a huge power. But right through, you think of all the stories I've said so far, the goal of it is to educate, inspire and motivate people to take action, but also embed that I'm incredibly valuable. And everybody that is selling a product or service, if their product and service doesn't offer value, they're going to find stories really difficult. But if you're an authentic introvert that is trying to help somebody, these stories are going to pack a punch. The other really cool thing about stories is it's scientifically proven that when I tell you a story, you remember... 22 times as much of the information when embedded into a story as the rest of the time. So if I told you to remember chairs, beds, and porridge, and a year from now, okay. I'm going to say, tell me what those three items are. What do you reckon my chances that you'll remember those are? I'm really smart, Matthew. No, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not very many. Pretty unlikely, yes. right? But if I told you a story of Goldilocks and the three bears, not only would you remember the three items, you'd also remember the order. So when I tell you a story... It has that effect of allowing people to remember everything. So when I go into a sales event, I love it when they've already met with five salespeople because you know, for me, that, that's a good challenge and I already know they've already done their due diligence. When I meet with somebody for the first time, if I tell them my stories, I still know that they'll remember more about what I told them from the story than the salesperson that's sitting in the room right now. So if I get a 15 minutes and they get 15 minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat them hands down. And that's the real power of telling a story. And one other really nice side effect is as we, from kids growing up for decades, stories has been the way of developing rapport. So for people like me who are kind of uncomfortable developing relationships with new people, when I sit down and, and have a conversation with them, if I tell them a story, it develops this natural resonance between the teller and the receiver of the story. It creates this instant rapport and it makes you see me as like you. And we all of a sudden have a relationship that you can't foster through just telling people facts. That's a step that most introverts don't have. They generally walk out of any sales activity going, I don't think he likes me. 
or I don't think I have that relationship with her. If you tell a few stories, especially stories of people that are just like them. Now, if you're working in commercial real estate, you're going to have an example for them. If you're working as a videographer, you're probably going to have a story. And if you don't, go away and write a few more stories and practice them. And then when you tell that story, and the reason why I always say write them down is once you articulate it on a page in a razor sharp format, it just comes off the tongue so well. And while you're telling the story, you can actually pay attention to what's going on as opposed to what you're saying. But then at the end of that, they listen to the moral and you know you've got them on the hook because they're like, oh, I am like that person. I can see how you help them. Yes, I can see how you'll help me. And you'll see them do this processing where they grab all of the elements out of that story and they see themselves in it. And now they know you're the only right service provider for them. And that's a real superpower for introverts because it gets them to share their true essence rather than feeling like they're trying to be that hardcore salesperson. I love all of this. What happens if you're not great at storytelling or writing or whatever? Does your book have tips on yeah. that piece too? Because I'm going like, we, how do we do a moral? What should the moral be? And how do we relate it back to, right? So the thousand other questions come up and I'm assuming you can get better and better and better at it. So know. the book actually gives you the exact steps on how to create a story, right? Because for me, story is the most important part of the book. I mean, question process to make sure you actually know what questions to ask that lead to a sale. Not, oh, do you like blue? I, I heard blue's great, right? Actually ask questions that lead towards a sale, but then telling stories is, is probably the most important part of the sales process. So when you tell a story, it has to follow a format and it gives you the format in the book. But also one of the other things for people that aren't natural telling stories, for me, I wasn't either. But what happens is once you've written your first three or four stories, you start to get the format. Mm -hmm. Like anyone that's doing their functional skill, I mean, let's say I was a builder. I probably sucked at building when I first started. Like if I if I decided I'm going to be a builder today and I'm going to build a house, it probably wouldn't look like a house when I was done. But once I'd you know learned and done my apprenticeship, I'd be fine. If I was an accountant, I probably sucked at finance. And now I don't. For people, we spend a lot of time learning our functional skills. Sometimes three, five, seven years, and then decades per perfecting it. And then we go out into business for ourselves and we put all this work in. Sales is actually pretty simple. Like for me, I went from terrified to sell to the number one salesperson in the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern Hemisphere in six weeks. Like six it weeks? took six weeks. It was just focusing every day. And I have to admit, I worked my ass off for six weeks. Like I was, every day I would go out and I would sell and I'd work out what didn't work. And then I would go out and I would watch all videos just about that one step in the sale where I got stuck. And then I would do the next one. And every day I would spend eight hours in the field, then eight hours learning. Right? I was completely entrenched in learning the exercise. But six weeks later, I was outperforming the extroverted people that thought I was a joke when I first started. And then they were asking me for advice. And when I told them what I did, they were kind of like, well, too hard, I'm not doing that. But for an introvert, they gravitated to it. So I ended up teaching all of the introverts. And then they ended up forcing the extroverts to learn my system because we were just, you know, introverts that had no right being in the sales field were killing the extroverted people. And it was all because we just followed this process. So. You know, it took six weeks. People spend a lot of time learning everything else. If it takes them three months of slowly perfecting it. So Alex, again, was a guy with the stutter, horribly introverted, really uncomfortable, started just embedding a little few steps along the way and told a couple of great stories and instantly saw the outcomes in his sales. Then he took that as motivation and perfected the process. Well, because what we have a tendency to do also, especially when we're introverted, we're like, I don't like it at all. So I'm going to avoid it and not look at it. And every time it comes up, it's just going to be painful and I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. But now knowing that there can be ways that, especially in six weeks, not that we need to do that in general. <laughs> we have a book now, thankfully. Exactly. Well, that, I made a lot of mistakes. And what I found is as an introvert, there's no real, there's nothing really out there telling you how to sell. I mean, you look at every book out there, it's written for an extrovert. I mean, that's why Brian Smith threw it on, throws them on the floor because he can't be that person. I think me, I had to learn by doing and look at different parts. You, you learn by doing. Yeah. And it's, un, it's painful. It is. It and, sucks. And it takes a long time. And as introverts, we take it all too personally. Yep. And by just understanding that it's a system and understanding that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to say things wrong, you're going to say things out of order. Don't beat yourself up about it. I mean, when you studied accounting or studied legal or learned to be a builder, you made mistakes. But over time, you perfected it. And with sales, it's the same. But just by following the steps, even if you do all of the steps horribly, just following the stepping stone process that leads to a sale, you'll double your sales. But once you start to realize how to perfect that and come up with your core stories, 
then all of a sudden you'll see your sales skyrocket. And for, let's face it, for introverts, we kind of just wing it when we go in and we walk out going, did they like me? We start to replay everything back in our head. The amount of energy that takes it's just easier to read the book and come up with a process. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say, though, because it was one of those things where I would think so much about it and I would get so frustrated and spending some time that actually made it enjoyable. Like, I actually lo I love sales now and I hated it, hated it, hated it. And was probably not going to make anybody whatsoever because you, that's where we make the money people like the number one skill that you actually need is sales and the fact that we sort of avoid it like this because we don't think we can be good at it sucks so i'm so thankful that you're here to tell everybody that they actually can be good at it even as an introvert and crazy but i know we have to start wrapping up also so and i didn't even prep you for this because you've been on the show before uh but i ask one question remember the last question no not <laughs> at all i told the story and everything he doesn't remember it from last year <laughs> Come on, ha <laughs> ha. Well, good, we're gonna put Matthew on the spot. We'll see how well he goes. Uh, number one, okay, last question. What's one action besides buying your book? Everybody go buy his book, besides buying your book, <laughs> uh, that, that people can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million? Against their goal of a million, I think if, if I was going to take one step, it would be actually blocking out time to learn sales. I think one of the things that a lot of people do is they focus on doing the functional elements of their job. I mean, for me, I think sales is, as you said, it's the, one of the most important things. It's why the lawyers that get paid the most are the rainmakers. They're the ones that bring in the clients. Yet we don't block out any time to learn it. So I think that there's one action we can do right now, which is just admit to ourselves that sales is a learnable skill and commit ourselves to learning it. And then just block out four hours a week where you'll actually focus on learning those processes. Now, my book's not the only answer. I mean, you can watch YouTube videos. That's what I did. And you know, I mean, YouTube's got some unbelievable information. I still put a huge amount of information on it because it's where I learned. And you know, there's a lot more there than just cat videos. Like there's a lot of stuff on there. So for me, if, if people are like, well, I want to learn the process, but you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm ready to commit to a book. Well, you can download the first chapter on the website at introvertsedge.com, but go to YouTube and just learn the process of telling a story. I mean, a lot of, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a comedian and spoken to them afterwards, but some comedians are really not funny in the real world. And they've got this process for how they're funny on, on the stage. And so for me, if I was an introvert and I was struggling in business or I was succeeding now, but I need to hire a sales team and I'm not sure how to train them, maybe you've learned through the School of Hard Knocks like you did to be a salesperson, but you don't know how to impart that onto especially other extroverted salespeople. What I would suggest you do is you block out time and learn the steps to the sale. And you might find that there are a lot of steps you're actually doing and they're just out of order and you just need to reallocate that. And then I would write down, I would go to a meeting and I, I, maybe you just sit down with a friend and say, I'm gonna to pretend to sell to you and record everything you do, get it transcribed yep. and then work, read it and go, oh, that should actually be there and that should be there once you learn the process. That'll improve your sales astronomically. And I mean, you don't have to buy a book for that. You don't have to read a book for that. Just learning the steps of the sale and then actually taking action on that. I reckon four hours a week, if people just allocate four hours a week, within the space of just a few months, their business will look very, very different. Okay, so right now, if you're not driving or anything like that, then take out your calendar and take out four hours in one week. Four hours is a lot, so they can do two hours if they need to, but long term we wanna do at least four. That way you can actually make a lot more money and do it now, because otherwise you, I know you won't. So. Tell us where we can get the book. I know you have extra bonuses. We're actually going to do, you said to give away two or three books for commenters. So make sure you go comment. So that way we can give you a free book so you can do all this and make double your sales. But tell us where, if they aren't lucky enough to win, they should go get the book right now. Yeah, definitely. So firstly, for, for people that are worried about it taking a lot of time, they'll save more time within the space of a few weeks. Because for people that I've seen that start to develop a sales process, all of a sudden they don't have to write these in-depth waste of time proposals and people buy in the room. So it makes a huge difference. And you know, we haven't even discussed how to close a sale without asking for it, which is horrible. Um, so you, you don't you're gonna have, have to come to back it. on the show again. Now so, everybody's like, great, thanks. So now they have the hook, Go right? buy the book. So Go buy the book. For people that buy the book though, yeah, we do have a lot of bonuses. So I'm a reader. Well, I listen to books because I have reading yeah. speed of a sick yeah, reader. Yeah, so I listen yeah. and yeah. also, you know, for me, one of the biggest things when I published this book is I wanted it to be available on audiobook, and it is. So people can 
and listen to it just like I listen to all the books where I, you know, I develop most of my knowledge. But on top of that, you know, the bonuses, all people have got to do is come to the website and there'll be a, a link to click on claim bonuses. And there they'll get video training from me actually explaining how to implement this stuff. So there's a couple of things that, you know, just, you know, for people that have got the sales process down, but they have a couple of other you know, little things that inside the video program, it teaches them how to apply things differently. It, it gives them a few more examples. And then on top of that, I didn't want to just be a talking head. So I flew in a lot of my successful customers into Austin and I interviewed them like this. So they talked about what worked, what didn't work, what barriers they faced and how they overcame them. So not only is it RAM packed full of additional value, you'll also see yourself in these people and know it's possible for you. I mean, I know what it's like seeing someone like me on um, you know, an interview like this. And you know, for me, this was it's still uncomfortable to sit on and do an interview like this. I have to remind myself to breathe. But me too, I turn red. I totally <laughs> understand. We're all like, and we're into it now. That you know, rapport part we had to do also at the beginning. Same well, thing. Well, that's it. Now I think for a lot of people though, they need to see other people that were like them, that struggled and sharing their real story. So, you know, there's video of Alex and Derek Lewis and all these people that are real people and the stories in the book, they get to hear from those people and actually see themselves in these people. And I think that's really valuable. And then there's the, the, the online stuff. So for me, I think one of the hardest things about learning how to sell like this is everyone's like, wow, that's a lot of work. And you've got no one really to bounce ideas off because everywhere you go to ask for advice as a salesperson tends to be an extroverted person that goes, it's easy, you just do this. And that doesn't work for us because they're telling us how to do it in an extroverted way. And as salespeople that are introverted, we have to learn to do it our way. So what I've created is an online Facebook group where for everybody that buys the book, they can actually share their successes, share their fears, share some of their scripts and share feedback. It's a really supportive group. And I, I've just, some of the people that are involved already, I've, I've seen some great value in that because people are critiquing each other's stories. I'm critiquing each other's stories. And then to give people a little bit of access to me for an entire year, I have agreed to do a weekly live stream for an hour where I will actually go through critiques some people's work. So if they put their scripts in, their stories, I will actually critique a load of them. I will answer questions and answer follow-up questions because for me, introverts need to learn how to sell. It's, they wanna create businesses that revolve around them, their families, their life. They wanna earn that exceptional income and it sucks that they can't. And I was lucky enough to get laid off just before Christmas and found my way into sales and it's made me who I am today. And I feel horrible for the fact that so many people shy away from this. So for a year, it's a long time. I was like, I'm that's gonna crazy. Do like you, that's a whole, yeah, that's nuts. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's, it's good. It's gonna help a lot of people. I'm like, go you. So everybody make sure that you understand how valuable this is. A lot of people are like, well, if they don't pay for it, they're not gonna value it. Like if that's the only thing you do is go talk to him every single week and be like, Matt, keep, keep doing this. I send my clients to you too, right? So yes, go get on that. And all you have to do is buy a book. It's ridiculous. Anyway, there's your pitch for you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You've done my job for me. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> buy it, buy it, buy it. Okay. So it's introvertsedge.com. Thank you so much. Everybody go check it out. Let us know what you think, A, in the comments. If they can tell like a story or how much you hated sales before and how you're better, or if you do still hate sales, go ahead and comment. So that way we can pick those three winners. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to be back. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to check out more amazing resources, I'm only curating the best of the best. Go check out eventualmillionaire.com. You can take the Eventual Millionaire quiz, figure out where you are in business and what you need right now. Plus, you can look at curated resources specifically for you on the new Start Here page. I'm so excited. Please join us. Please let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. And have a fantastic day. Bye.